Whoa, what's happening? Am I all here? In one piece? Yes. I'm back. Anyway, hey there YouTube, Wrestling Optimus here. It looks like I'm back in my house, safe and sound, and Jenny is nowhere in sight. So it's finally time to do that unboxing video. Now, there are a number of reasons I'm doing this unboxing video today. Number one, it's fun and I have a bunch of figures. Number two, this is evergreen content that tends to get a lot more views. Number three, Dynamite's on Saturday this week, and I don't have time on Sunday to do a review, so this is what you're getting instead. And finally, there's a bunch of AEW figures in this episode that I want to be able to use in my next AEW review. So with all that said, like and subscribe, and let's get to unboxing some action figures. Before we get started, I do have my accessory bin on hand so that uh, we can put all the extra pieces in here. And the very first figure we have is um, part of a tag team. This is the other half of Viking Raiders. It's Eric. Uh, looks like he was part of an Elite Series 80 that came with uh, Kyle O'Reilly, who I did not get, uh, another Ricochet, Kevin Owens, and Bailey, which I think I opened up on my last uh, unboxing. Like ferocious Norse warriors, the Viking Raiders decimate their enemies until there is nothing left. The raid is on. Anyway, yeah, this is the Elite. I already have uh, Ivar, and let's complete this tag team by uh, letting him breathe. Throw the packaging over there. <laughs> that was loud. Save the background. Uh, first thing, we got a couple of extra hands. So it looks like we got that kind of rock fist. And we just got a regular uh, open fist there with uh, all his tattoos. On the figure itself, he also has that kind of rock fist and an open fist. So it looks like we can just kind of put the, the rock fist on either hand. Let's put this back on so you can see how awesome this is. There it is, his Viking helmet with the big ram's horns. And look at that giant ponytail. I love that. I'm gonna take it off because it's not the most secure thing in the world. Set that aside. He also has this awesome kind of Viking battle armor. Look at that. Got a like crest or something, something like that. Comes around the back, it does buckle, but look at that. For once it actually kind of like fits and buckles in. Great, great head sculpt. Fantastic paint job. Loving that. These tattoos are incredible. Obviously, it's the Elite Body. I was actually in Walmart the other day and saw the uh, complete set of the basic Viking Warriors. Because um, these Elites were the first time in the line. And uh, I was thinking about getting them, but I figured if I already have the Elites, I don't need the basics. Because look at that detail. Look at the, the boots there. I'm assuming that's some sort of uh, Scandinavian writing that I cannot read. Um, what I started doing on my last unboxing video is kind of rating them on uh, various scales. So this would be on a WWE Elite scale. On a scale of 1 to 10, this is way up there. This has got to be at least a 9, maybe even a 10. This is really, really cool. The, the entrance gear alone just really makes this uh, a great figure, depending on how much you like that tag team. Um, I do like them, but I like them better as War Machine on the independent circuit. There he is, Eric. Alright, next up, Rhea Ripley. This is the Elite. I think I already opened up the basic on my last video, so um, this one's part of Series 84, and since I've already opened up a Rhea Ripley, we're just gonna get right into it, crack it open, and uh, show you what it's all about. All right, toss the packaging over there. Got a background right here. We'll just set that aside. And here is the uh, figure. But first I will show you that it did come with an extra pair of pants, since she is holding up again with the rock fists. I came with two open fists as well. So we'll set those aside. Since it's an Elite, it does come with a little bit of entrance gear. So we got her awesome vest. 
And look at that detailing with the chains on the bottom. Oh, that's the uh, Australian flag? I'm gonna be, somebody's gonna kick my butt if that's uh, New Zealand. But no, I think she's Australian. Tony Storm is New Zealand. So that's the Australian flag. Um, just like the basic, she's got this kind of collar going there. But unlike the basic, she's got this kind of abdomen articulation going there. Uh, the head sculpt. Uh, honestly, I think I kind of liked the basic better, but I mean, it's not a bad head sculpt. Uh, it's got the, got her hair, which has that kind of, you know, it's like shaved on the sides, comes down the back, kind of like mine. <laughs> and then it's got all this decent detailing work on the legs, because she obviously has all these chains and buckles and straps and things like that. So that's pretty cool. I think if I had to give this one a grade, uh, it does come with some decent hands. It does come with, uh, you know, some ring gear. And so it's not bad. I would just maybe work on the head sculpt a little bit, but uh, let's give it a um, 7 out of 10. And finally, in the WWE category at least, we have one last Elite. This is Angel Garza. It's part of that Series 84, the same as the Rhea Ripley I just opened up. Oozing with movie star machismo, this third generation luchador is ready to clip the wings of any superstar standing in his way. I'm pretty excited to get this open, at least on the outside, it looks pretty good. So let's let him breathe. So before I throw the box over there, um, I will say, if I didn't already mention, this is his first time in the line, um, and I didn't realize it says he's exactly 205, um, so that does make him eligible for the Cruiserweight division, and I never knew, but he was apparently Cruiserweight champion at one point? When was that? Did he, like, beat Devlin or something? Or maybe it was on Devlin's hiatus. I don't know. Anyway, that's pretty cool. Good for him. Let's take out the background, chuck away the box. He comes with two extra hands. They are open fists, in case anybody cares. The ones on the figure are uh, open hands, because he's, you know, putting his wings out there as Angel Garza. We'll talk about it real quick. There's the head sculpt. It doesn't look half bad. Looks kind of like him. Got a ponytail in the back like he always does, but when it comes to an Angel Garza figure, there's only one thing that matters, okay? And that's the tearaway pants. So, <laughs> here we go. Oh! The Lethal Lothario. <laughs> that actually worked out really well. So, I am quite happy with the tearaway pants. That That is a great gimmick. Um, I have no clue how I'm going to get them back on, but there you go. Tearaway pants. We'll set them aside. Um, pretty basic with regard to ring gear, um, but he's got that Angel Garza logo all over, including those knee pads. The knee pads are pretty cool. And he's got logos on the back. No tattoos that I can see, but he does have the really nice darker skin, being uh, Mexican. So, it's a pretty solid figure. I mean, there's not much to it, but it has it where it counts. The tearaway pants work. They look great. He looks great. Why not? On a WWE Elite scale, let's give him a 9 out of 10. Alright, and now it's time to get into the AEW figures. And I am beyond excited. We got a bunch to get through today. So let's just get to it. First... We got ourselves a ringside exclusive. It is the double or nothing TNT champion, Cody Rhodes. This packaging is incredible. Look at that fantastic box art right there. Him holding up the championship. Here it is, the double or nothing stage. Oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait with the, the scaffolding. That looks really cool. And I love how they did this. They stuck the extra head. So you see there's like a yelling head and a scowling face. As well as the uh, American Nightmare um, logo shirt. And an extra pair of fist hands. They put that on the side of the box. 
I love that because then it makes the presentation here that much better. You see the double or nothing there, and then we get these kind of flame things. Let's just get it open again. This is a ringside exclusive, but the best part about this, I won't have to use that Stardust for Cody anymore. That's why we need to let this baby breathe. So unlike with that uh, WWE Elite packaging, let's take a moment to admire this packaging. As you can see, we got these cool uh, fireworks going off, these pyrotechnics. We got the uh, dynamite stage there. Again, back here, we got the scaffolding. So you put that all together and it's really cool packaging. You don't often see stuff like this. So gotta give them super duper props. Yeah, we'll set that aside, and we'll move on to the figure. First, here's the accessories. Again, we got a scowling and a yelling face Cody. We also have a pair of fists. We got his, uh, his American Nightmare shirt. Here's the TNT Championship I finally have to go along with my uh, Women's Championship I got with Riho. And then here is Cody's weight belt, his famous weight belt that he likes to beat people up with. And here's the man himself, the EVP, Cody Rhodes, with awful neck tattoo and all, but hey, He's got it, and they did a great job with it. He didn't do a great job getting it, but... <laughs> There's his dream tattoo across his chest. We got this smiling face uh, by default, and open hands by default as well. I'm loving this purple gear. Um, I know there's all kinds of gear, because there's all kinds of Cody figures in, in these lines, but... Um, we got the American Nightmare logo on the boots as well. We got some cool logos all over the thighs there. And then we have the silver side over here. So this is awesome. It comes with a ton of accessories. That packaging is absolutely amazing. Even on a super duper ringside collectibles exclusive. This is a 10 out of 10. This is fantastic. I finally have a Cody. I can finally stop using Stardust. My reviews just got that much better. Next, we're gonna do these guys together. They're the reason that I'm wearing this shirt. I finally have my Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy Jurassic Express, a boy and his dinosaur. This is Series 5 of AEW Unrivaled. These figures are amazing. If you've seen any of my other unboxing videos, I'm in love with these figures. I love the packaging. I love the detailing. I love the accessories that come with them. And these are the two, outside of maybe Darby Allen, that I have been waiting for the most. These two are the most marketable, especially Luchasaurus, the most marketable as action figures and I just can't wait to crack them open so I mean the packaging is always great I don't think there's really any reason to get into it let's just let them breathe I think we'll start with the uh, kind of simpler figure and the first thing I noticed is unlike say proud and powerful they don't really come with a lot of accessories so they do come with an extra set of hands. We got open fists for Jungle Boy. And here he is. And I think what it comes down to is just the detailing. That face sculpt looks just like Jungle Jack. That hair flowing and amazing, just like his. We got some cool, just uh, basic knee pads, but look at the detailing even there on the knee pads with that those great, you know, patterns. Look at the boots. The boots are incredible. I'm really excited about, look at all that fringe. We have all the articulations of an uh, unrivaled. 
And I know he's just in basic brown trunks, but that's Jungle Boy. And then here he is, the crown jewel of the AEW collection, in my opinion, Lucha Saurus. Just wow, just just wow. Look at him. That mask slash face sculpt is insane. It's absolutely insane. I put his arms out so you can see all that detailing. Look at those tattoos. We got this really cool belt leading down to this. He's got this kind of scale pattern on his pants with the gold boots leading down to the uh, toes in the socks. Just like Jungle Boy's boots, we got this sick fringe pattern on the back of his boots. We got that uh, scale pattern coming up here, again, into the belt, and look at that tattoo detail work on the back. This is some of the best tattoo work I've ever seen on a figure of any kind. We got, similar to Jungle Boy's knee pads, we got this cool pattern or design on the gauntlets. And, of course, there it is, his painted fingers. By the way, you do get two extra open hands to grip a microphone, which also has all that detailing for his fingernails and his tattoos. But even look on the inside of the gauntlet, we got that lace pattern. But I just can't get over this head sculpt with the braid. And, like, this is... I think we're gonna have to just go with a spinal tap here. This is an 11 out of 10, okay? Just on the detailing alone, it doesn't matter that he doesn't come with any accessories other than an extra set of hands. My new favorite figure in the AEW, at least right here luchasaurus and of course it wouldn't be luchasaurus without jungle boy so we'll put them together there it is jurassic express similar to that last one i think we're gonna have to do these guys together also part of series five in the unrivaled collection this is scu at least the original incarnation they were the first tag team champions in AEW history, and that's why they come with the belts right there, right there. And I'm excited because Frankie Kazarian's doing some cool stuff. He's going after a bunch of people. Scorpio Sky is teaming up with Ethan Page. Right there, I got more people to use in my reviews. This is really exciting. My reviews are just getting better and better. I actually have championships now. I actually have a whole bunch more people that I haven't been able to use up until now. Let's let these ones breathe and show you SCU. So totally random, we're gonna do Frankie Kazarian first. Even when I first saw the mock-ups for him, I knew I did not like the face sculpt. So there it is. Um, I mean, it does kind of look like him, and yet it kind of doesn't. There's something about it that just is a little off, and that's definitely going to take away a few points from the total score. I'll also say, uh, again, unlike Proud and Powerful, which came with a ton of accessories, uh, weapons and things like that, uh, outside of the title belts, don't really have much. Um, I guess you could count this. This is a, a jacket, and it does come off on the back. We'll just point this out. It does have this awesome hood that has kind of uh, a mohawk of spikes. And then it says, this is the worst town I've ever been in. And then his trunk say Kaz. On the front, SCU, obviously. And you can see there's also, well, maybe you can see, uh, there are shoulder studs. Let's take the jacket off. It appears to be a uh, three stud mechanism. Again, no accessories and no extra hands even, so let's just take a moment to admire the championship belt, the tag team championship belt specifically. Um, I don't know if you can really see the detailing in there, but it is really nice. 
Uh, the colors are great. You can see it kind of shimmering in my lights here. Um, the one that comes with Scorpio Sky is identical, so I won't hold that one up to the camera. But uh, here is Frankie Kazarian without his jacket. Um, it doesn't look like he has any tattoos, so it's a just kind of basic body. Uh, it says Kaz on the back of his trunks. He's got uh, knee pads. Again, pretty nice knee pads. Otherwise, fairly basic, but uh, Frankie Kazarian's a pretty basic guy, so it's a pretty basic figure. Lack of accessories, kind of a jankity face, and pretty basic figure. I, I think, unfortunately, on that enhanced unrivaled scale, this is going to get a six. It's pretty low. Sorry, Kaz. Moving on, here's your tag team partner, or old tag team partner. Uh, we got Scorpio Sky. We'll put his face sculpt right up into the camera. I think that is, uh, first of all, really appropriate for his character right now with the, uh, you know, kind of cocky uh, one eyebrow up look. But it also just kind of looks like him. So that's pretty cool. He also has kind of ring gear here that it looks like I can take off oh, on the side. But before I do, just taking a look, it's pretty cool. He also has a hood, and on the back, SCU over top of an image of California. All right, let's get that jacket off and we'll check out the figure without it. So first of all, I think I kept calling this a jacket. It's obviously a vest, I'm an idiot. Uh, we'll set that aside. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, what's really cool about these figures is you can just pop a torso off. You can just pop hands off. You can pop heads off. I mean, if you really want, you can make Franken creations of your favorite AEW wrestlers. Now, even if you're not going to make some abomination, I do appreciate the fact that you can interchange parts if you lose them if you uh, want to hold a microphone, hold a weapon, or wave to the crowd, or do a rock lock, whatever. They give you lots of extra hands. Everybody's hands are interchangeable, and that's just really cool. As for Scorpio Sky itself, um, I think I may have gotten a factory defect. As you can see, this leg has an S and the foot faces the correct direction. On this side, not so much. Now you may be saying, well, just flip the foot around and that's fine, but what about the knee? In order to get that knee facing front, I need to now have the thigh facing like that, which completely gets rid of the logo. And you can also just tell, look at that seam, that's supposed to be an inner thigh, that's supposed to be an outer thigh. But they put the knee on backwards. <laughs> Alright, so that obviously takes away some points. Lack of accessories takes away some points. Uh, being a little bit basic takes away some points. I think he's slightly better than Kazarian just because the head sculpt's better. But the factory defect, I mean, come on, man. 5 out of 10. That may be the lowest score I've ever given for an Unrivaled. On to the next figure, and this is the first duplicate of an AEW wrestler I've ever gotten. It's mostly because I just wanted to keep the Series 5 train rolling with my second Hangman Adam Page. Now, the first one was great, but he did have those giant clown feet, and this one comes with, as you can see, a bandana, a pitcher, a rocks glass, and uh, some extra hands that I believe are making gun fingers. So we're going to open this bad boy up. We're going to compare it to the old Hangman page and uh, going to explain why I got a new version. All right, let's start with accessories. So he comes with this funny pitcher that he can put all of his beer in. It comes with this rocks glass so he can have himself uh, a shot of whiskey or make it a double. And then, as I suspected, finger gun so he can uh, do some cowboy shit. 
Now, the reason that I got this Hangman page is because I just felt like it was such an upgrade from Series 1. I mean, they did a really good job on Series 1, but they learned from all the mistakes. The skin tone, better. The proportions, better. We no longer have clown feet. Um, it's just a better figure, in my opinion. The other one had trunks. This one has pants, which is what he's kind of been wrestling in for a while now. Okay, I wouldn't say that it's the best face sculpt ever. Uh, it does kind of look like him. And uh, I would say it's better than Series 1. But they still gotta work out a couple of the kinks in order to get that to really, really look like him. However, the hair looks great. The vest looks great. Look at all the detailing and all those designs. He's got a nice big cowboy belt buckle. We got even more detailing down the leg. What is that? Some sort of more detailing on his cowboy boots. So, with the uh, decent face sculpt, really nice hair, nice vest, really cool ring gear, and uh, all these accessories, including the bandana. Let's go with eight. It's not as good as the, some of those nines and tens I gave out earlier, but uh, it's not as bad as, say, the SCU guys. And finally, the last figure of this video, I technically already have this guy, but not in AEW unrivaled form. I have Dean Ambrose, but this is John Moxley. That's right, I basically said screw it and bought all of Series 5 because I wanted an actual John Moxley. I wanted all those other guys. I wanted a better Hangman page and oh look, the last belt I needed, I now have the AEW belt, the TNT belt, the women's championship, the tag team belts. I am very, very happy as a completionist. And it's just time to get this open and I'll do a quick comparison to the old Dean Ambrose figure I've been using up until now. Let's just start with the AEW championship belt. Look at that in all its glory. I got the uh, the kids replica back here. I hear they just uh, released the full blown replicas and they're selling for like six or seven hundred dollars. Uh, yeah, I can't afford that. Uh, it's beautiful though, as action figure belts go. This is this is just great. Uh, one of the best belts I have, to be honest. And here he is in his red headed glory. It says Mox down the back of that vest. Look at that face sculpt on point in my opinion. Maybe a little bit off on the facial hair around the mouth, but otherwise that looks just like him. Gotta love these camo pants or splatter pants. I don't really know what they are. I mean, it's simple. It comes with one accessory, a belt. I can't give it super high marks, but it does the job. It says Mox, it looks like Mox, it comes with a belt. I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10 on the unrivaled scale. Solid figure, recommend, but for now, I'm just really excited to have a proper Moxley and a proper Cody Rhodes. Look for them and all the other AEW figures I got today in my next Dynamite review. It's gonna be coming to you next Thursday. All right, so keep an eye out for that. All right, that'll do it for this unboxing video. I had a really good time. I hope you did too. If so, make sure to do all that normal YouTube stuff. Smash the like button. Share with any wrestling or action figure fans you may know. Subscribe to the channel and spread the word. You can talk to me over on Twitter at Wrestling Optimist, Instagram at Wrestling Optimist, or check out my Facebook page, Wrestling Optimist as well. Until next time, I will catch you later.